So the next person that I will be joined by today is Colinette of Little Pieces Lingerie. She makes incredible, like beautiful, original lingerie designs. And she has a special project that she's gonna be sharing with us. Hey, how you hey. doing? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay. Just making sure that we technically we're good. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yay, hello. Hi. Oh my gosh, it's good to see you. I know, it's been a long time. I miss your face. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> you hug. Virtual no, hug. <laughs> oh, so it's so good to see you. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us about your business? Yeah, so I am Kalani Flume, and I have a business called Little Pieces. It's a burlesque-inspired luxury lingerie brand, and uh, it's ethical fashion. So I focus mm -hmm. on um, raw materials made by places that are kind to people and that pay their workers a living wage. I use a lot of upcycled fabrics, and so that I um, started with about a year and a half ago, and downtown's a great source for a lot of dead stock fabrics, so that's great to be in LA for that. And um, I also uh, focus on all body shapes. So I will do custom items for people. I try to make styles that are very democratic, meaning that can fit, you know, a lot of different people. Um, one of the styles I can just show you really quick is, for example, this um, Ooh. skirt. So the skirt, which a lot of you have already, a lot of the <laughs> Melrose Trading People um, fans have it, but it fits a whole bunch of different body types. I've seen size zero, zero get into it, and I've seen two Xs and three Xs. So, um, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> Not all styles are, are meant for all body types, but that is the goal. The goal is to do different styles that fit different body types or styles that, you know, like, like the skirt I'm wearing it now, um, <laughs> that has a great amount of stretch. Nice. I love that that's a, such a pillar of your business and that the ethical sourcing is also a pillar of your business. And it really makes you stand out um, as far as a lingerie brand. It's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's a work in progress for lingerie in general. Um, and mm -hmm the reason why is that it's so expensive to produce that I think most factories have to produce it overseas and whether they're getting, um, you know, workers that are paid a living wage is a whole nother story because it really, all, all the cost of lingerie for the most part is in the labor. And so mm -hmm. me handcrafting it myself and um, paying myself my own slave wage, you know, it, at least, um, I'm, I'm kidding about that, but I mean, me doing it myself as a business saves that high high cost of labor. Um, and the the other thing that, that I would really like to get into are um, more natural fabrics. So that's another um, point in ethical in in laundry that's hard to be sustainable because most of the fabrics have some kind of lycra in them. So that's why I like to use upcycled fabrics because at least, okay, the fabric is made, it has um, like, or it's polyester, it won't necessarily degrade like a silk will or a cotton, mm -hmm. but at least we're using, you know, we're making use of fabric that would otherwise be thrown out. Um, mm -hmm. So the, I have recently, um, about six months ago, I finally sourced recycled laces from Italy. It's really hard to find. Um, but again, I, I'm just starting to experiment with the recycled laces. Um, no one, no one does them, only one Italian company. So I got some samples and ultimately that's the goal to be able to say, okay, this is polyester, but it's recycled polyester. And mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, you had a chance to look into any of the um, LA textile uh, textile mart forums but six months ago in October I went to the sustainable fashion forum and I learned so much it was just such a good experience um, and so a lot of the speakers there were saying that recycled polyester is even is the best option right now above even natural mm -hmm. fabrics because with every fabric there's mm -hmm. going to be um, 
there's going to be a give and take like cotton takes a lot of water bamboo takes a tremendous amount of energy so it's not just oh it's bamboo it's great it, it's kind of looking at the bigger picture and saying well what went into this fabric and so right now they're mm -hmm. saying that the recycled even if it's polyester or nylon if it's recycled it's really good because mm. they're taking mm. bottles and you know taking the plastic bottles and turning them into fabric or taking fabric and turning it into fabric other fabric you mm. know that's so cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, didn't, I didn't know that either until I was attended that conference. And what was the name of the conference again? So the um, Los Angeles Textile Mart happens twice mm -hmm. a year. It's in the California market. The It's nine, I think it's 910, 9th Street. <laughs> but it's the California yeah. market, the showroom. And then ev every mm -hmm. six months they have a um, textile show and then in addition they have trend forums and sustainable fashion forums and other meet meetups that you can attend i mean usually wow. um, yeah i'd love to spend all three days there i usually only pick a day and do that but it's a great so cool. to make connections to you. if you're looking for a factory if you're you know you can go there and make those connections Wow, that's really interesting. That's such an insider's look at like how you were able to improve your business and educate yourself on like what the coming trends are, but also like how to be more sustainable. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, I, I definitely will attend again. Um, it was just like I took notes nonstop for, <laughs> for the whole day, one day. Yeah. I love that you have that dedication to your business that you do want to keep learning and keep knowing like what's the forefront of your industry. Yeah, I think um, it's so important right now. And, you know, as you know, it's, I, I kind of fall into that category of the more I know, the more I realize I don't know. And I think I started with like a few movies and then I was like, oh, Oh, and then I read a couple more books and a, and a couple of good starting points if anybody wants to um, to learn about this is um, I put a little note here. Let me turn it over so I can see it. Um, the book Overdressed by Elizabeth Klein is a really mm. good one, as well as the movie The True Cost, which was directed by mm. Andrew Morgan. So both of those are just, you know, starting points to, to learn a little bit about um, what's important and about ethical fashion and why it's important and what's actually going on. Um, like yeah. in the, in the trading post, like I'll have my booth and, and I can't tell you how many times someone walks in and I say, Oh, I like your bag. And then they say, Oh, I got it at H and M for $5. And then I just, I kind of cringe and I'm like, think, think a little bit, what, how can, how, how is it possible that this elaborate bag costs $5? Like what, mm -hmm. how, how is it possible? Mm -hmm. So in the end, it's, um, you know, the, the laborers that suffer, or the workers that are making it that are being paid like 10 cents an hour in Bangladesh. That's how it's possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I do feel passionately about that, which is why um, I have little pieces. Because I did not want to work for a, for a corporation that was involved in that. Mm. Um, because all, you know, at any time I would take a corporate job, I mean, I would say 95% of all fashion companies cannot operate ethically right now because they wouldn't mm. be able to meet costs. There's only a few that, you know, like Patagonia, and then there's, there's, a, there's a, you know, a very... Um, small amount of companies that are very conscious and um a lot of them are actually based in LA which is great because it's a little more knowledgeable here but it's hard it's hard in fashion mm -hmm. and and another thing that's really hard <laughs> and then I'll stop I'm on a, I'm on a rant here <laughs> another thing that's really difficult is that the general customer is now um what do you say, acclimized? They are used to, to, to not, to, mm -hmm. for lack of my big word, I can't find my big word right now. So they're just used to these prices. So they don't understand how much mm -hmm. goes into a garment. And, you know, the post, like, 
I have a wonderful following of regular customers that do understand, but then I'll get people in that don't understand. They'll say, well, I can get this on Amazon for 20 bucks. And it's like, mm -hmm. yes, but <laughs> you know, what yeah. are behind that? And what's the quality? How is the fit? Who made it? Um, was mm -hmm. I, like there, there's one um, thing I do repeat. I think I saw this in one of the, one of the films that I watched, but um, it was, a quote from China from somebody and he said we know what color is going to be in season next season by the color of our river you know are the dyes that they're using and dumping into oh, the wow. river you know so it's just wow. yeah it, it's it's quite heavy when you start studying it and this is why I'm doing what I'm doing yeah I your passion about it is incredible and I love that you put that into how you source everything you like every thought every decision that you put into your business is because of all these things that you're learning and that you're exploring in the industry and so what you said you had worked for a couple of corporations to begin with and that's kind of what led you into business. yeah I did I did the corporate rounds I did L brands which is the same owners which were secret and then I did forever 21 I was with Abercrombie and Fitch for a while and way back in the day um and then I was also uh with a couple vendor manufacturers so I got to see a really good inside view of what's going on and uh I didn't like it, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I and like clothing. I love creating. I like fashion. I don't like what's going on in the fashion world right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're changing it <laughs> one step at a time, <laughs> you know, one brand, yeah. one little piece at a time. <laughs> it's just so inspiring that you're, you know, that's the lead of your business. That's the ethic. The ethical drive and that's why people should be looking into what you're making um also the things you make are so beautiful Thank and you. i really want to know like how do you how do you come up with your collections and like aside from like the way the fabrics are made but like the prints and everything that you pick it's so beautiful like what are your inspirations so my brand anthem is avant-garde burlesque now, it took me a while to get to that, um, and that was from another book. <laughs> Obviously, when you sew all day, you listen to a hell of a lot of audiobooks. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I was not always this brainy, but, um, you know, when you sew all day, that's what happens when you buy yourself. It can, you know, boy, do I know politics now. No, I I'm kidding. <laughs> um, Fascinate by Sally Hogshead is a Hogshead. So it's, the book is called Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. It's a marketing book. Mm -hmm. And um, so she talks about having a brand anthem and sticking to that. And that has really helped me because in the beginning, mm -hmm. I kind of was doing a little bit of, I mean, somehow you tend to gravitate towards doing things that you like, even if it's not exactly funneling into your brand the right way or, mm -hmm. or even, if it's, it, even if it's not brand right for your brand. So I found myself doing a couple of American apparel looking photo shoots, which were cool, but it wasn't the burlesque look that I, that would be easily recognized mm -hmm. by other people. So that's, so when I read this book and I came up with avant-garde burlesque, and then that became kind of like the core, the grounding point for a lot of inspiration. So mm -hmm. I try to imagine, could it be worn in the 20s? Could it be worn in the 30s? Does it have kind of a burlesque influence to it? Whether it's from um, the pat, like whether it's a corset influence um, mm -hmm. or whether it's a print influence. Like I try not to do things that don't have some connection to my my 20s and 30s brand and um um mm -hmm. core did that did 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 i explain yeah. that well <laughs> yeah yes, that's perfect yeah that really explains it so well i love that you gave another book recommendation too it's called fascinate right fascinate by sally mm -hmm. hogshead and she's kind of this I love the book. She, she, um, I think she narrated it herself, which is generally like always a little more catchy to listen to when it's the actual mm -hmm. author. Um, 
narrating it because they emphasize the exact, you know, the exact words they want to be emphasized. Um, so yeah, she's a pretty cool woman. I like the book. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It really shows like what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And you have to keep learning and growing and, you know, just learning new things through, from books, audiobooks, whatever makes sense for how you're doing your business. I think all entrepreneurs, I mean, it's, it's so wonderful to be in this circle of entrepreneurs because um, you do have to have a closet full of hats. And it's always amazing, like even my entrepreneur, you know, my Melrose family, entrepreneur friends are always doing new things and asking, you know, we'll ask each other, hey, you've done this, I really want to do that. Do you have any tips? And um, that, and I've done quite a few collaborations with, I mean, I, I love the Melrose family. There's wonderful artists there, there really are. And um, I, I, wanted to just take a minute and talk about a couple of the collaborations um yeah. if that's okay but maybe uh, yeah they're in connection to my products maybe we could get to the, my products and then i'll circle back to the collaborations but i do want to okay i don't want to forget that because it's really fun yeah you've got it you're I love that i love that that's so like that's one of my favorite things is seeing vendors come together and create something and it's it's been happening also during like COVID. I've seen it through our online chats that we do with our vendors every week. And people are like, let's make this together. Let's, and it's just so cool and like cross promoting. And yeah, so, it's just oh, it's oh, so go ahead, go ahead. fun. <laughs> it's so fun. I ask you, like, uh, how do you how do you feel being a part of that community of vendors? And so I love it. I love it. And what I what I also love about it is not just meeting fellow artisans but I love the market environment I love the bazaar like I've traveled a lot and you know it's the bazaar the bazaar is always the place where people from all over that area are coming old young you meet it's just such interesting people and you know I've made some like I call them friendstimers. I have customers that are, they're more like friends, you know, I call them friendstimers. Yeah, but, um, you know, I had, it's the range from, you know, a couple of the very, um, uh, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to be politically correct. I think there's a couple homeless people that come by that I just chat with all the time. And we have a great, there's one guy in particular, we have this great conversation, he comes by every now and then. And I know he's homeless because eventually I said, hey, where, where are you living? And he said, well, here and there, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. two celebrities. Like I've had, you know, <laughs> top-notch celebrities that are also my friends to most. So that's, it, it expands the horizons um, in a way that I wouldn't be able to, to meet these people were I sitting in an office. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't come across the same variety of person. And so that's mm -hmm. one aspect. And then the other is, you know, the, the, the fellow artisans and vendors, when you see someone um, once a week for, every, you know, for a whole day, you chit chat about stuff and you start to get to know people and then you just make friends. And um, it's really cool. Again, friends that, that normally I might not have the ability to meet were I not at the bazaar. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know. It's so true. It's really, you know, we try to make the Melrose Trading Post a place that can appeal to, like, any walk of life. And we do see people that come through our doors. It's just a variety of people from all over the world, all over Los Angeles, all over Southern California and beyond. And, you know, seasonally we get to see people, like, a lot of people come from all over the world, like, especially during the summer. You know, so we're really missing yeah, that right yeah, now. Yeah, that too. Like the amount of tourists that come through um, are amazing. Like really international travelers and people from all over. You know, um, yeah, I've had I've had um, you know one of the girls who came through. Now her name is escaping me, but she's on the she was on the show like German next top model right now. Um, and she's covered head to toe in tattoos. So she, she, um, I gifted her a piece and then she was, she's an influencer. So she did something with it. 
and <clears throat> she's apparently the first um, tattooed model on German, you know, next top model. So just those kind of things are really cool. Like, who would have thought? Okay, cool. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah, I know. Like, it's almost like there's a celebrity for everyone in the market because it's such a wide variety of people that come. Like, I know our high school, like, staff members, they'll be, like, going crazy over, like, someone that's in the market, you know, we hear about it, and then we're, like, we have no idea who that is, but then, like, I see someone I know that's, like, you know, I like drag queens, so it's, like, oh, that's, you know, so-and-so, the drag queen, oh, my God, and so, and the students are, like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. You know, it's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's someone for everyone. Like, we even had, um, I'm not going to remember their names. I believe, like, some really big, like, actors that are, like, you know, Oscar winners or something, oh, like, yeah. together to the market one time. <laughs> We're, well, like, I've seen, I've seen, yeah, I've seen, I, I mean, I don't even know if I, I'm not going to start naming names, because I don't know, I feel like you can't, name, I don't know, can I name names? I'm not sure, but, um, oh, I'll name names from someone else, like, uh, Jeff, who sells art, said, um, <laughs> Annie Lennox just asked me for my playlist, which was really cool. I mean, it was like, what? You're That's kidding. Awesome. You know. Now, first of all, the millennials might not know who Annie Lennox is. Yeah. Just Google. <laughs> what, what did you say? Well, I said they should Google her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was, that, that was, that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, yeah. there's someone for everyone there, and it's, it's just so fun. Like, it's such a fun environment to meet people, like you were saying, to really, yeah. like, um, build a customer base. And so how has it been for you building your customer base through the market and through all the other things you're doing? So it's been excellent, really excellent. And that's been my, my source of customer base, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, is now, which has been wonderful. Um, but as a result, um, I have not put any time into my, um, my website. So suddenly I'm like, oh no, I have to sell online now. And I've been focusing on the market. Ah, you know. <laughs> so because you know, it's yeah. just become, it took priority, like the weekly market mm -hmm. took priority for my business. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been interesting because I think a lot of a, a lot of the maybe some of the vendors are going through the same thing where you know we suddenly have to update our you know you got to get on now it's online so update the website and and there, there's a whole process to that that you know it's not like I didn't want to do it before but it is time consuming you got to photograph it make sure the lighting is right do the post production you know mm -hmm. it's a process and then um, you know, one of, I, one of the things that was that's wonderful for me about the market is that I also use it as a bit of a test market. So I can come up with something mm -hmm. different and just see, I'll put it out there and say, well, do people like it? Do people not? Before I take all that time to photograph it, you know, and like put it online, I can just see if even people like it. So, yeah. yeah, I've heard a lot of people use the market in that way because it's such immediate results you get to see like oh people like this or not <laughs> right yeah yeah so um i love that about also doing the market like having that one-on-one -on -one interaction and then i do have a little changing booth so you know saying oh why don't mm -hmm. you try it on and then um yeah getting to see um well you know will it will it fit this person <laughs> i mean i'm not like it's it's not a it's not it's not that um, it's a secret. It's just like, hey, this style was meant for this body type. How does it look on that body type? Mm -hmm. Oh, it actually looks fine. Okay, great. Here you go. You know, 20 bucks off for you because, you know. Yeah, and I imagine you have quite a challenge now with, like, you know, you do have to, you know, spruce up your website, which obviously you've already done. And, like, you also have an Etsy shop. You're all over, and you have to really, like, focus in your efforts now that it, everything is closed. So like, how has all these closures impacted you and the way you do business? So um, I have switched over to almost entirely making masks. And mm -hmm. that was obviously like, it's been really interesting because for me suddenly I was like, oh, this is what it feels like when you don't have to worry about how it fits. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, it's like pretty, you know, kind yeah. of size fits all. Like, I do have a couple sizes, but um, the <laughs> women's bodies are so intricate. And yeah, especially when you're doing bras and bra lives, it's just the mm -hmm. fit is, it's, you know, it has, it's just, I have to really concentrate. And then I was like, oh, I can just make these and sell mm. them. <laughs> so I have to so, um, so I want to show you guys a couple masks. So the original mask um, I have is made out of uh, soft yeah. foam, and there is a flexible nose piece in it. And then you can tie it behind the head or over the ears. So I'll just put one on that I already have tied. And, um, and, oh, yeah. And what's really nice about this one is that because it's made out of foam, it doesn't suck up your nose or get in your mouth. So mm -hmm. you can hear me talking normally as I have this on. And so that's what I love about this one. It's just like, you, it's just like a little dome here and mm -hmm. then carry on as normal. Um, so I find this one like super comfortable, but then I did want a more, but it is a little bit bigger. Like it doesn't really fit in your pocket, you know, um, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it's a, it's a structured piece. Um, mm -hmm. So that one I have in several colors. I sell them on Etsy. Um, I have my website, but I also have a Etsy shop. And Etsy is the, I think, the best place for me to sell these. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people looking for masks on Etsy and for liability reasons. Um, I first started there before, before the CDC said face coverings are necessary. Mm. I just didn't want anyone to think it was an N95. It is not an N95, it's a face covering. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have uh, different colors. Um, I'm, I'll show you three different colors here. I do have other colors online. I have the ivory. Mm -hmm. Now, what's neat about that is that it matches the skirt. So oh, yeah. You can get kind of oh, a matching yeah. matching outfit. Um, and then I have uh, corn flower, flower blue here, the dark teal, which is a limited edition. Um, mm -hmm. And then I have a lace one, and I have a pink one. So there's a few mm. of these. Um, and then the next style, which is, I just put it online today, I is the um, masquette. I call it the masquette because it's little. It folds up. So the mm. way it works is that it opens up like this. The inside is cotton, and then the outside is um lightweight microfiber and these are remnants mm -hmm. from my robes these are also upcycled fabrics and these mm -hmm. are my leftovers that um so when mm -hmm. i make a bigger piece so these are the leftover pieces from that and there's several colors so this so also features let me go into features so mm -hmm. there's a wire that goes in the nose and then this one has adjustable straps for your ears so you can tighten and oh, cool. yeah and then it has a filter pocket so filter pocket, nose wire, adjustable ear straps. Now, if you do want to wear it behind your head, you can take off the strap. And then I have other head straps. So the straps are interchangeable. Wow. So you can put it around your head. If you really want like a more secure fit, mm -hmm. um, it just depends on preference. Like there are um, people who say, hey, I have a hearing aid. I can't have anything else back there. I don't have room. And then mm. there's other people that are like, I need to be able to do this for, you know, um, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, it's just more comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. And and I get it. You know, sometimes you just, you know, you're going out for a quick thing. You don't want to, you know, fuss. So. Um, wow, yeah. those are cool. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's several. So there's the feather colorway. And then this one I love. This is my scarf print. Mm -hmm. I'm going to. That's yeah, kind of neat. beautiful. And then I have, um, so I have a lot of different fabrics. This is like a blue floral, and then there's a pink. Um, so this is a pink rose, and then this one's all cotton. This is fabric that I brought back from Bali when I went a couple years ago. So um, really like this one. Uh, and then I have many of you may have seen the robe that's made out of this darker floral. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've got a shibori print, which is really cool too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and then the, and then a, a kind of Japanese um, cherry blossom linear floral, and then um, I just did these, which are new, which I love. Um, <laughs> the pinstripe. So I have Ooh. this for Ren too. I haven't put it online yet, but this is like if you have to go to a business thing, and you mm. need to look professional. Can you see the pinstripes? Yeah, there. Right there. Yeah. 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 It has, it's like That's gold and cool. black with a little charm. And so, so I love that one. I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, I love how you put your, your stamp charm on each one. I have my mask here. Oh, you have a little, yeah. The, the little piece of oh, little. But so pretty. It just gives it that beautiful touch. <laughs> yeah, here. There you go. Yeah. It seems to get out of focus. But, yeah, thank you. I developed this for lingerie because everything for lingerie has to be a little bit smaller, you know. Yeah. Details. You can't just have a giant detail on on lingerie. Mm -hmm. Um. So I do want to talk about one thing. Uh, so Marston Company sells it in Melrose Trading Post, and she mm -hmm. makes these awesome soaps and candles. Um. So she made these aromatherapy samples for the mask. So we collaborated oh. and then you spray it so that you just spray it into the mask and it doesn't last, it's very gentle, it doesn't last too long. And then when you put your mask on, you have like this beautiful, wonderful scent. So there's six different, I think she has seven. This one's aphrodisiac. It has a orange, patchouli, lavender, sandalwood, and langling. -lang. Mm -hmm. And then she's got one that is uh, relaxed and that's lavender. And then there is Invigorate, which is lemongrass, sandalwood, black pepper, and lemon. And then Anxiety. This is one of my favorites. I love this one. It's amber, lavender, rose, and orange. Mm. Um, yeah. And then there's Calm, which is, um, I think it's Pettigrain, which is an orange blossom, I think. Some kind mm. of orange blossom. Uh, chamomile, neroli, and lavender. I mean, they smell delicious. And so that was an exciting collaboration. Yeah. So that when you put, you know, because I was like, I put it on and I was like, I have coffee breath. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> and so I was like, why don't, you know, so this kind of just That's such a good idea. I love that. And I yeah. love that you collaborated with someone that you met from the market. Yeah, so and then that's the first collaboration, but I, I have another collaboration, which I'll get into after. I don't know how much time we have. For it now. Let's uh, go into the collaboration. Oh, okay. So, so um, the collection I was working on before COVID was for festival fashion, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to get up here, and it was the silk slip dress. So this is 100% silk. And so it is uh, biodegradable, you know, when it's so because it's in completely natural fiber. So I was making them in, in this one's yellow, this one's the pink one. And then I made this festival corset. So the festival corset has precious stones, this has rose quartz chain, and each one was meant to be one of a kind. And then it has a bag for um, like your cell phone, so it won't fall out mm -hmm. with a very high end zipper. And then it has a keychain. Each one either has a crystal or something symbolic. So this one was the seashell. Oh and then it has a sunglasses bag. And these bags are removable and interchangeable. And then, um, so I'll just let it hang there. And then the back, whoops, sorry. <laughs> the back um, has a lace up. So you can adjust oh, it cool. and a hook. So you can take it on and off easily, but you can also tighten and adjust it. So it fits a lot of different people. So that's what I mean about, you know, democratic styles. Like this can fit an extra large waist or a tiny, tiny waist because it has this lace mm -hmm. up. Um, and then, so we talked about this collection and then um, Sandra from Pink Paisley's Jewelry makes this mm -hmm. amazing jewelry. I love it. Um, and so she made, she did um, uh, course, uh, corresponding jewelry. So like this one has mm -hmm. with semi-precious stones. So you can get like the, 
the course, the festival corset, and then you can buy like corresponding jewelry. Um, wow, that's so cool. And then it all so, comes together. Yeah, you can, you know, if they, someone buys it from me, I send them over to her. If someone's buying, you know, the jewelry from her, she says, oh, well, you can get the corset, you know, from, from little pieces. So this is another mm -hmm. example, you know, a different colorway, and they're each one of a kind. So, um, so no two are going to be the same. And this one has, I wrote it down, it has some amethyst, what is it, a venturing chain for mm -hmm. tranquility. So they're just really elaborate. Um, they're just like little pieces of artwork that you can wear, but are also really functional. So that um, was in store for, for festival. Now, I don't know when we'll be festivaling again, but it's also a good COVID corset because you can put your hand wipes there and yeah. your phone there and you don't have to touch anything. So um, goes, the mask goes in there when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, I love that. That is so innovative. And then the earrings, the, the collection that she made um, are these, these earrings are just so gorgeous. And she made several different um, colors, you know, with semi-precious stones. So pink paisley's jewelry, Sandra. Um, and she's also got some really um, great stuff online. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, just so cool so cool to have like you're coordinating like if you were actually headed to a festival and you could have your coordinating jewelry with your slip dress and your corset and you're all set mm -hmm. to party hands-free that was the idea so yeah. wow I so, mean it I see a lot of like innovation at the market a lot of people like start trends they start like like just invent stuff you know they create new things put old things together to make something new and it's just so like, oh, I love this. I had no idea you were working on that. And to see it, it's like, it, this is what like we're hoping is happening at the Melrose Trading Post, that people are on the forefront of fashion and forefront of everything, decor, all of it. So it's yeah. so cool to see that that's what you were working on. Is it, it's not available for sale it's right now. It's not online so. yet. I need to get it online, up, um, but but uh, if anyone wants wants one, they can just DM me, you know, mm -hmm. after this, and then we'll work it out. Um, I mean to get it online. Uh, again, it's the, you know, doing the photography. And now that with COVID, it's like, well, we're not really doing a lot of model photography. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, it's got to be more of a, you know, um, top-down photograph or still life or whatever. So I'm, oh, I'll, uh, I definitely want to, not forget about these beautiful things that um inspire me they inspire me it's kind of like it comes to life and you look at it and you're like oh, look at you <laughs> you know so. it really is um it's very innovative and to see everything you've done with the masks i know that you have a project tied with your mask making that oh yeah um, sorry yeah. yes so <laughs> Jeez, I completely, thank you for reminding me. I got so excited about the collaboration. So we have a small, um, small help, small face mask donation project. And so far um, we've donated 600 masks. So um, we've donated to a home, like we donate them in lots of 100. So um, we've had very generous donations from some of the wealthy Hollywood crowd and that has mm. been um, a lot of them have been through my um, mentor Gary Bourgeois who um, mm. probably is watching now hi Gary um, <laughs> and, and he's he knows a lot of the Hollywood crowd and they have made some very generous donations which in turn allow mm. me to um, keep some of the people my helpers you know I wouldn't say employees but helpers um getting mm -hmm. some income so they've sewn these masks and we've donated them in lots of 100 um so we've used mask mat mat mask match at so mm -hmm. at mask match and they match you with a facility that needs the masks so so mm -hmm. far um, we've donated to Kaiser Permanente Cedar Sinai Redwood Acute, Post Acute, and then um, mm -hmm. Mission Homeless Shelter, Unity Hospice, and the Senior Center um, in North of California. So we're working on another lot, but if anyone uh, wants to donate, it's, 
it's transparent. Like you can call these places up and say, "Hey, did you get the mask?" And you know they'll tell you yes. So, and and it's been, and they've uh, they've been very grateful. Um, so, again, I guess you know the need for PPE is not as desperate as it was when we started doing the the project, but it's still. I mean, it's especially facilities like the cloth masks. Um, shouldn't be used for more than I think if you're a doctor, you know, for half a day before, you know, washing it because it kind of yeah. soaks in the COVID. So um, again, with, with your cloth mask, after each outing, you want to spray it down with alcohol or wear it or put it aside and let it sit in the sun, mm -hmm. you know, um, just to change. So you do want a couple masks if you're, if you're wearing the cloth masks. Mm -hmm. You don't want to wear the same Absolutely. one day. yeah so um so yeah so i think the lots of so even even though ppe is not uh, in there the news isn't you know talking about it every night it's still needed these facilities mm -hmm. still need the donations you know they don't i think also funds are short so they can't you know even if there, there's availability to buy it's different than getting a donation. Um, mm -hmm. I think prices for masks are still pretty high, even if they're available. So yeah, so it's a good, it's a win, win, win situation. And so if someone wanted to donate to that project, where would they go? So they go to my website, which is www.littlepieces.us. And then you'll see in the drop down menu, um, the small help, small face mask donation project. And then the ones that we are making, they're much more simple. They're the folding masks, mm -hmm. but they are effective um, for, you know, they're good for their purpose. And then we mm -hmm. do them in two sizes. Um, so yeah, they're very simple, but they, they work. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. And so can you tell us about, um, cause you said you're also on Etsy for the face masks. So if someone wanted to purchase a mask, they would have to go to your Etsy, correct? Yeah, they can go to my website and then follow the link to it's, it goes, you know, you can, you can click on the link and go to Etsy. Um, so www.littlepieces.us. Yes. Um, yeah. Very cool. I know. I love my mask that I got from you. It's like absolutely so beautiful, really soft to wear, um, easy to clean and it has, like you said, the metal piece to like bend it over your nose to make sure that, you know, you don't have a gap right here yeah. where something could get in. It's, it's a really high quality mask and Thank I love you. mine. Yay. Yeah, I've gotten <laughs> some very good feedback. Um, so, and you know, a lot of people that purchase on Etsy come back for um, two or three or four more. And what's really neat about Etsy is that, um, I, I do, so I love the market because it gives me a one-on-one -on -one local um, perspective. But then Etsy, I'm like, well, I've had orders from Barcelona, um, mm -hmm. from France, uh, uh -huh. Canada. So it's cool to see how, how different people from different parts of the world will also, um, you, you know, get exposed to, to the mask and say, I, I want that one. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> Out of the whole world, you wanted that one? Okay, I'll take it, you know. So. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it goes to show you, like, the ethical stance you take with what you make, um, you know, makes you stand out as well as the beauty of the design. Thank you. Yeah, so, it's so we're, we just keep chugging along, you know, and doing, you know, one little piece at a time. Mm -hmm. And hopefully mm -hmm. everything will... Hopefully we can get through this. Well, we will get through this, but hopefully, you know, our community gets through it with less um, suffering rather than more suffering. Cause I know it's not easy for anyone. You know, I think uh, us makers have it a little bit easier. A lot of us are set up to work from home. So, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have that crazy boredom and not knowing what to do. Um, yeah. So I feel very it's lucky amazing. that I'm set up to work from home and I'm used to kind of, I went through, I went through that um, the first year I was working from home. It was really hard for me to, to figure it out. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. but yeah. 
But hang in yeah. there, everyone. Oh, Keep I love that. Out. Yeah. Uh, do you want to leave the the audience that's watching now and whoever will be watching later, do you want to leave them with some some words of positivity? Uh, just yeah, some, I mean, um, I just sent out a newsletter and uh, the words of positivity are this. It says the Roaring Twenties. So right, like we think of the Roaring Twenties as this fabulous party time, but they partied right after this. I mean, it took them a, a you know, they had a, 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 a year or two, you know, before they just bam party. But I mean, this all happened after the Spanish flu and World War One. Mm. So, you know, if you think about it, it doesn't mean like the whole decade is going to be gloom and, you know, doom and gloom. Like, mm -hmm. we think of the, you know, we refer back to the, the roaring 20s as this amazing time in history. Well, that happened right after the Spanish flu. So hang in there. Mm. <laughs> we'll, the, we'll have your festival course at ready when when we're when the when the festival start up again. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you so much. I love thank that you, you were able to spend this time with us today, and thank you for giving us so many like great resources. And you know, I really learned a lot about the garment industry and fabrics. And you know, could you maybe give us the the two books one more time. I saw in the comments that someone had asked about the two books that you read. Oh, yeah. I haven't gotten used to um, reading the comments as we have still, <laughs> you know, I think that's a skill that you develop. Um, yes. So the first book is Fascinate by Sally Hogshead, and that's the marketing book. And that's mm -hmm. where I came up with the brand anthem based on that. And then the second book was about the fashion industry, and it's called Overdressed by Elizabeth Klein. Nice. Awesome. Oh, that's so good. Like, thank you so much. You've really given thank us you. a great inside look at what it's like to be a designer in Los Angeles and what it's like to really, you know, be an entrepreneur and keep going through this time. Thank you so much. And I, you know, I can't wait to get back to the market. And Me too. Thank uh, you again. With all my friends. We won't be yeah. hugging yet, but we can do an elbow rub maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so Soon much. Enough. Have a really good <laughs> day. You too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me and Kula Nate. It was such a great interview, all about the ethical um, options that you can take as an entrepreneur in the fashion world. And she's doing incredible things with her masks. I highly recommend if you need a good mask that's comfortable. Uh, she has thought this design through, and it is really well made. Uh, so again, it's Little Pieces Lingerie on Instagram, and her website is littlepieces.us. So I will be back at three o'clock with our last guest of the day. Her name is Claire. She is an artist, and she has a brand that she's been launching uh, called Tiger's Labyrinth, where she makes handmade pillows and different clothing items and I can't wait for you to see all her designs. We're going to get a tour of her workspace. On so. in. I uh, just wanted to answer a couple questions I saw in the last video. A few people were asking about uh, if we know if we're going to be opening, and we do not know when we will be opening, unfortunately. So just to keep that in mind so people know, uh, we're doing these MTP Live videos each Sunday that we're closed, just to make sure that we can still uh, give you a way to connect with the wonderful people that sell at our market and the awesome people that uh, perform on our stages. So each Sunday we're bringing you uh, three to five vendors from our market and giving you a behind the scenes look at what they do. And then we're also bringing you a live, a live musician. So I wanted to actually just give you a little information about the things that we're offering currently. Uh, if you go to uh, the link in our Instagram profile, it'll take you to our link tree. And in there we have several links for you to check out. So the first one is the MTP Live link, and that's where you can see who's coming up uh, on the next Sunday, and you can also see uh, the videos of the past Sundays that we've done, all the different interviews. And then there's also a link to our online shop directory from there. So if you've missed shopping our vendors, which I bet a lot of people have, 
uh, we've been working with our vendors to get them on our website so that we have a directory where you can see pictures of them, their merchandise, learn a little bit about them. Uh, if they've done an MTP Live, we're putting that on their page as well. And we're trying to just make it very vibrant and fun so you can learn about them, learn uh, where you can shop their merchandise, and also learn how you can connect with them on social media. So that's on our link tree as well. It's melrosetradingpost.org slash directory. Um, and then lastly, we have a link for our vendor and musician communities. So if you're a vendor or musician who's sold at the Melrose Trading Post or who has played on one of our stages, you're invited to participate in the digital opportunities that we have, uh, like MTP Live that you're watching now or our directory. For musicians, we also have a Spotify account. And so with that, you can... Um, we can add you to our Spotify account and get you on our playlist of Melrose Trading Post music. Um, so there are lots of different opportunities, so definitely check that out through our link tree uh, and the link in our profile. So, uh, thank you so much. We've come to the end of another MTP Live. Um, if you're just tuning in now, I have videos from the last few weeks up on our website, melrosetradingpost.org slash MTP dash live. And you can also access that through the link in our account. It'll take you to our link tree, and then you'll see all of the wonderful things that we're offering while we're closed. And yes, we are closed, of course, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And we do not have an opening date, and we hope to know an opening date, you know, in the coming months. But while we're closed, we're going to still be connecting you to the local businesses that you love and hopefully help you discover new local businesses as well. So definitely check out our online directory. It has uh, 94 vendors from our market listed on there. Not all of our vendors sell online. So, you know, we're, we're getting the ones who do. So definitely check them out at melrosetradingpost.org slash directory. Hi, Patrick. Um, and so um, alongside the directory, you know, for our musicians, we have a Spotify account. So if you go on Spotify and look up Melrose Trading Post, you'll actually see our account and you'll see our playlist of Melrose Trading Post artists. So these are artists that have played on our stages and they really reflect like the vibe of the market. So if you miss the market and miss listening to all the music at the market, definitely check that out. And if you're an artist who's played at the market and you want to join it, uh, visit melrosetradingpost.org slash creatives with an S. And that is where we have all of our digital opportunities for vendors and musicians. Uh, so once again, I'm Natalie from Greenway Arts Alliance. I'm one of the managers of the Melrose Trading Post. And I'm so happy that you're here today uh, joining me to meet these incredible local vendors and uh, to get a great performance from Jesse Pio. And if you want to connect with any of these people, um, we have profiles for them on our website. And if you go to melrosetradingpost.org slash mtp dash live, you can learn a little more about each one of them. Um, and in the coming week, we'll be adding the videos from today to our website as well. And if you're a YouTuber, you just love YouTube, you can go to youtube.com slash Melrose Trading Post and see all the videos from MTP Live, plus see videos of the market. Uh, we make playlists on our YouTube channel of all the really like top-notch videos that people make while they're in the market. So there are lots of bloggers, there's all kinds of people. Um, you know, who love the market and they share what they love about it and they share the vendors that they love and the food and the music and the atmosphere. So if you're missing the market, definitely check out our YouTube page. We have so much on there and we're actually going through our archives currently and we're looking for old videos of the market and like B-roll that we have of the market. So we're gonna keep adding stuff to our YouTube channel as we're digging through all of that and uh, help you kind of reminisce about the times when we were in the market. Um, and hopefully you won't miss it too much. But if you do, remember you can shop our vendors still online. And if there's a vendor that you're not seeing on our directory, you're not seeing them featured on any of our social media, go ahead and send us a message. Uh, you can email us through our website, or you can just send us a message on Facebook or Instagram, and we can help you figure out who that vendor is and how you can connect with them. So definitely don't let the market's closure stop you from shopping locally. Uh, these vendors are incredible people, as you've seen from our past interviews, they're really putting a lot of consideration into each decision that they make in their businesses. And their businesses are ethically minded, they're uh, minded towards mental health, they're minded towards uh, you know, 
well-being and uh, really thriving. So please support these businesses. Uh, when you support one of these businesses, you're supporting a family, you're supporting a person who does a little dance when they see the order come in. So definitely make sure that even, you know, whatever you can do, if you can shop or if you can just connect and support them on social media, whatever you can do definitely helps. So once again, I'm Natalie. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you loved MTV Live and we'll be bringing you more next week. Have a great week. Thank you.